Hello, I'm Glenn Murphy with Burroughs Welcome Fund Science Explorers, and today we're at Durham, North Carolina's Duke University with Dr. Nick Buschler. Dr. Buschler is a biophysicist who specializes in systems biology. That is, how the bits and pieces of living systems work together to perform the essential functions of life. Incredibly, he actually builds new living circuits inside cells to see what will happen as they grow. Dr. Buschler, thanks for joining us. Oh, glad to be here. So let me get this straight. You build new living things inside cells to see what will happen when they grow. I mean, how do you go about doing that? And where do you get your parts from? Right, well, that's a great question. So sort of our approach is my background is physics. And so I sort of take a bottom-up approach to biology. And so what we try to do is to take a quote from another physicist is, what I can build, I understand. And so we try to actually understand how gene circuits work in living systems. And we do this by building very simple circuits in yeast. And so we take our parts from anywhere from jellyfish, we've got them from fireflies, humans, plants, you name it, bacteria. So what's the coolest piece of equipment you guys get to work with? Uh, we have a time-lapse microscope here. We call it Lord Vader for obvious reasons. Let's take a look at it. We've got an incubation chamber in here. We can keep the yeast nice and warm. We can feed them in real time while they're growing under a microscope. What we do is we take a picture every three minutes. We look at sort of the GFP, yellow fluorescent protein, or even the firefly luciferases, and then we take all these images and put them together to make a nice movie and look at how genes turn on and off over time. We've seen Dr. Buschler build gene circuits inside living cells and learned how some genes can switch themselves on and off, like alarm clocks set to go off at certain times of the day. But how does that help us understand the living world? And how can we use our new knowledge of these biological switches and clocks? Well, for starters, it helps us to make sense of daily rhythms in nature. For centuries, scientists have known that plants and animals follow patterns of activity that repeat every day and night. Some flowers open their petals every morning but close them in the afternoon and evening. Others bloom in the late afternoon or the middle of the night. Diurnal animals, including humans, are active during the day but sleep most of the night. Nocturnal animals do the opposite. We call these daily patterns circadian rhythms, and almost every living thing has them. And although they're affected by sunlight and other outside factors, they continue even without external cues. They seem to come from within. Until recently, we had almost no idea why that might happen. But through the work of Dr. Buschler and other scientists, we now know that it's all down to genes. Or rather, groups of genes that work together in circuits, turning each other on and off in repeating 24-hour patterns. What's more, it seems that circadian rhythms are important for more than just blooming flowers and sleepy animals. Crop plants release their seeds based on cues from internal clocks, and migrating animals, including birds, butterflies, dolphins and whales, use internal clocks to navigate across thousands of miles of featureless land and ocean. And amazingly, almost every human organ system coordinates itself using internal clocks. It follows then that messing with your circadian rhythms, say by flying to a new time zone or working a night shift, will also mess with your muscle tone, your sleep patterns, and your digestion too. Worse yet, we now know that messing with your internal clock for months or years at a time can cause or accelerate a whole host of digestive and neurological disorders, including obesity, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and even certain types of cancer. We're already discovering that in many cases, when you give someone a medicine can be just as important as what you give them. And who knows, one day maybe we'll be able to reset the genetic clocks and switches inside ourselves and reverse the development of disease or even aging. But for now, that's about all we've got time for. I'm Glenn Murphy. Join us next time for more Burroughs Welcome Fun Science Explorers, making discoveries in our world and beyond.